right, uh, it's a full hour here. So uh, welcome everyone to the functional group update for the distribution team. Um, today, we're going to go through accomplishments, concerns, plans, and then uh, finally uh, questions. So uh, we're gonna start with the Omnibus GitLab package. A uh, couple of items we worked on in the past couple of uh, weeks. Um, we have Let's Encrypt on by default, but uh, when we say on by default, we mean uh, whenever you say, set uh, HTTPS and you do not provide certificates, we're gonna try and fetch uh, Let's Encrypt certificates for you. And uh, furthermore, once you actually have those certificates, we are going to periodically check uh, whether they expire or are they expiring, and we're gonna try and uh, auto renew them. Um, we also spent a lot of time in uh, upgrading um, internal libraries in the package. Um, that's actually expanding every time we uh, add something. Uh, we actually need to test uh, things thoroughly. And um, I think we upgraded something like seven or eight uh, libraries that have impact throughout the package. So that was a pretty big um, item that we had to go through. And um, one thing that we've been having basically since the beginning of the package, um, we didn't really have a good way of enforcing upgrade paths. So when we would have a breaking change, um, we recommend in our documentation that you go uh, between major releases, but uh, what we realized more and more in the past couple of months, uh, users just jump between releases. They don't check change log, they don't check blog posts, they don't check messages. Um, they just go from, for example, 8.1 to 10.6 uh, and uh, things get uh, broken. Um, the problem is we also um, don't have a good way of um, making sure that even when a user jumps like that, um, we can't um, easily recover, um, recover them or rather user can't easily recover from a failure. So we worked a bit on uh, enforcing uh, upgrade paths. So now uh, with GitLab 11, that is due uh, next month, um, we'll abort the package installation as uh, soon as you go from uh, an older version to 11 um, and you didn't upgrade to 10.8. Um, next item we also worked on is the GitLab Provisioner, which is a combination of an uh, Ansible script and Terraform. Um, the reason why we worked on this is uh, we needed a way to quickly verify uh, whether uh, HA is working correctly when we boot things up um, because of the breakage we had, I think, a couple of months ago. And um, this is progressing very well. A few items left there to do. Uh, basically, we need to connect the provisioner to our CI and we'll have automatic, uh, automatic provisioning of uh, the full HA environment um, on demand so we can test things before the release. Couple of concerns, um, we keep adding components. When I say we, I mean wide community as well. Um, we, um, we are adding libraries that are not big per se, but um, every library we add, we need to go through a certain chat checklist so for example, whether a license is acceptable, then whether it can be built on multiple different um, environments. And then finally, every library we add, adds um, uh, a test route that we need to, to cover. Um, we also, uh, with, as ever since we introduced uh, Prometheus, we also add, are adding um, various exporters. And I think recently we added, the, um, I forgot the name, something for alerts. Um, it slipped my mind, I, don't, I can't remember right now. Um, and that actually requires uh, more configuration. So uh, every time we add configuration, we, um, we uh, jump into a problem where um, user can have any certain number of configuration options um, insert, uh, configured in a certain way and we can't easily, um, we can't easily cover all of those cases. Um, last time I mentioned that we worked on uh, triaging or rather that the whole team is doing a weekly rotation on triaging the issue tracker. 
And that is uncovering a couple of interesting things. Um, we have uh, quite a number of actionable items to go through. Um, so what counts as an actionable item? Um, if something is set for scheduling, that means that we need to devote some time to it, uh, whether uh, reproducing the problem or um, uh, looking at the impact of the problem and trying to fix it. So that list is growing um, and with the number of uh, items we can actually uh, resolve per release, um, this is uh, one item we are going to have to keep an, uh, an eye on um, as uh, it can go out of control easily. Um, however, the issue tracker is under control now. We are not growing like we were growing before. So I think that's a uh, good work uh, done uh, by the team. Um, the triaging also uncovered that we have a bunch of HA related issues. And that's a worry because um, with GitLab.com running in the HA configuration and our customers, the biggest customers running HA, we uh, will need to uh, work on that uh, with uh, some more priority. Um, the last one is a bit of a uh, concern for the whole company. I personally feel it's a big uh, deal. And that is geo is difficult to set up. This is not strictly a problem for the distribution team, um, but um, if you go and take a look at what needs to be done to just install geo, um, I think it should be quite apparent uh, that something is not uh, going right. Geo team is working as best as they can, but of course they are responsible for the features as well. So um, as we uh, get merge requests from uh, the Geo team, uh, we review the diff, but we don't have the time to look at the whole picture of how this thing is evolving, um, which kind of shows with the documentation we have on setting up Geo. So this is something that we'll have to uh, worry about very soon uh, as a company as we start selling more um, geo setups. Uh, moving on to the cloud native uh, Helm charts, um, we worked on uh, preparing for beta. Uh, beta is going to be announced uh, very soon. So uh, as preparation for that, we changed the name of the project. We are now just GitLab. So the chart is now in the project name GitLab. Um, and the, the, the big uh, repository of all the charts we had, we split them up into separate projects. And now when you actually want to install one of the charts there, uh, you can get also a version to chart. Um, so quite a lot of uh, nice work done there. Um, when you install the new chart, you're also going to get GitLab Runner configured out of the box. Um, it is going to be um, configured with some restrictions, so you won't be able to run in a privileged mode because it's deployed on the same cluster where GitLab is deployed, but it's going to be enough for you to uh, quickly spin up GitLab and try um, either one of our demos or um, just uh, to test uh, how things work. Um, similar to GitLab Runner, we have monitoring as well. A bunch of runners, uh, well, oh, sorry, not runners, but uh, exporters was uh, added uh, to the chart as well. So um, the, the, the whole story we have with the Omnibus package there is uh, pretty much uh, covered. Um, and we exposed almost all configuration that you can configure in GitLab uh, YAML. And, um, we added the outgoing uh, email support so you can connect to uh, external um, mail uh, services. Uh, one thing that we didn't uh, add yet and we uh, moved it out of the scope is uh, we are not going to be supporting relative URLs, uh, which is a feature of GitLab um, for now. And uh, we are not focused on incoming email support, which means that we don't have the feature parity to what GitLab.com offers at the moment. But um, this was a decision uh, in order to make sure we can actually uh, hit our beta dates. Concerns, um, as we were working on GitLab runner chart, we realized no one is actually maintaining the chart, which is a real shame because that's the only GA chart that we have. Um, we had a number of uh, community members uh, submitting merge requests and no one reviewing them. Um, and when we uh, changed some things to get the support for the new charts, we managed to break 
a lot of people's workflow, including our own with setting up auto DevOps, which was not really great. So that's a problem that we need to resolve somehow with other teams. Um, and uh, we also have a bit of an issue with what is our target audience with these charts. We started with GitLab.com being the prime uh, target, but as we started working on this more and as the focus moved um, more towards GCP migration, um, we were left with trying to test things to, uh, to the best of our knowledge. Um, so now we are running into issues that are pretty much similar to what we currently have with the Omnibus package. We are targeting single small installations with allowing options to, uh, to have a big installation like uh, GitLab.com. Um, that's not currently working for us really well with the Omnibus package, so I wonder how it's going to go uh, with the charts. Um, but uh, we will see the reason why we are focusing on smaller users at the moment is um, with uh, our users contributing um, um, their time testing this thing. We already uncovered uh, a number of issues that we previously didn't uh, look into. Just because our workflows are not covering them, we wouldn't be catching them on GitLab.com anyway as well because we are not using the same features there. So. Um, this seems to be a right move for now to uh, get to a usable chart. Um, another thing is our transformation from a monolithic application is uh, challenging. It touches all of the teams in the company, in engineering at least. Um, and it seems that it's really difficult to get on the same page um, on some of the priorities of these issues. Um, the, the problem with that is we can't really slip our deadline with our deadlines at all. We don't have enough time, obviously. So um, it, it, sometimes it feels like we have a bit of a head-on clash with some teams when we start asking, hey, like, how do we do this now? We, we, can't, uh, we can't move without uh, this problem. And that causes issues with planning um, with, uh, with other teams. Um, but uh, on good points there, I have to mention that uh, Alessio is doing an amazing job together with Jakob Vosmeyer and uh, Nick with uh, Direct Object Storage Uploader. Um, that is a really big change inside of the uh, GitLab workhorse and um, that is progressing and we are currently dependent on that uh, feature before we can uh, release the charts uh, in beta. Um, another thing uh, is backup restore task. Um, we realized that no one, we won't be able to uh, de deprecate our GitLab Omnibus chart without uh, people backing up their data and exporting it into this new environment. So um, we try to get some work done there. Um, Ahmad was working on, on getting uh, Gitali endpoints written there. But uh, we also realized with the help of uh, Jakob that um, we need to finish that story completely. It wouldn't be really uh, helpful to just do one thing. So basically with uh, what's left of Gitali team, uh, Ahmad is uh, working on getting that backup and restore task uh, done. And as we are progressing further, we are discovering more and more of uh, upstream issues. When I say upstream, I mean, uh, items that um, we didn't even know were a problem before uh, because of the shared uh, file system that we had and uh, um, the, the, the fact that uh, every process could reach almost everywhere. Uh, we didn't think about it and now we have uh, problems like we can't really use GitLab import feature. Um, we can't use uh, uh, project templates and a couple of other items there um, linked as well in that uh, list. Um, yep. We're over uh, 10 minutes as stated in the handbook. Can we take questions now? Yes, of course.
All right, if there are no questions, um, I think we can then uh, end this functional group update. Thank you everyone for listening. Did you want to mention maybe a little bit of the help that uh, we provided to the production team, uh, Marin, or? Yeah, we can mention that. Um, we worked on getting the GCP migration on the road a bit. Um, we had Ian work on setting up the database and uh, we also had uh, Jason look into some of the issues uh, we've been having with, uh, with some of the nodes uh, in the previous release together with a couple of other production um, uh, team members. All right, great. Uh, well, thanks everyone and um, have a great uh, day.